Welcome. Today I'm going to continue my series in homeschool recommendations. I have done early elementary and this is going to be upper elementary. I also plan on doing a middle school and a high school recommendation videos. Welcome to my channel, Learning with Boys. My name is Rachel. I am a homeschool mom of four boys. We are on our 16th year of homeschooling. I have graduated too. So this school year I have a high schooler and a middle schooler, and I do enjoy doing videos past and present. So this would be mostly past because I am gonna mention some things that I would recommend because my sixth grader may be using them now. Do you consider sixth grade, upper elementary, or middle school? I feel like that is a huge transition year. So I may use it in both videos. So I'm just gonna give you a heads up on that. But I say between third and fourth up to fifth and sixth is upper elementary. I also wanna mention that a lot of the curriculum that I personally used, I do have videos of like look-throughs or comparisons, and I will link them below. Also, I will mention some curriculum that I did not personally use, but I know somebody that is using it. And just to give you a different option because everybody's families are different and their needs are gonna be different. So just give you a couple that I would recommend if I wasn't using or recommending what I use. So, all right, let's get started with language arts. Okay, I am going to talk about for language arts, some writing, some grammar, spelling, and also just some handwriting. Um, I do wanna mention, before I mention the writing curriculum, coming out of the early elementary into upper elementary, I really just start off with narration, copy work, um, written narration. Like I would even use a whiteboard and let them narrate to me and copy it and let them copy it. It all depends on their level that they were at in writing. One thing that we have been using, majority of our homeschooling, and even not every year, but it's been woven in throughout our homeschooling years is IEW, which is Institute for Excellence in Writing, which I highly recommend. Now, I do wanna say that I really don't recommend this too much until you hit the maybe fourth grade, but I would say fifth or sixth grade. If you are starting out with the video course, like level A or level B, of course, for upper elementary, I would say level A. I'm holding this case because this is the old teacher's videos that I still have. I do recommend them. If you can't get the old, I suggest you order the new if you're thinking about IEW. I have used, I have looked back at these over the years just to review myself as I may be teaching another student. This has worked for all my boys, which are different learners. Now we have not only used the videos, but we have also done theme books. My sixth grader this school year is actually using the medieval history-based writing lessons, and this is going good. Now, I do wanna mention, I do have a video that I will link below that really talks about how we do IEW a little bit different. Um, if you get a chance, watch it. I just feel like it doesn't have to be as stressful as some parents may think, and so I just give you some hints and ideas of how we use it. So that is for writing. For grammar, I wanna give you my recommendations that truly did help me as the teacher, but also helped my students. The first one would be Shirley English, and that is something that I start at the end of third into fourth grade. And then I transition over into Winston grammar. Now the reason I end up doing both Throughout the upper elementary, you could start a little bit later, a little bit earlier. I really don't start a formal grammar until like third or fourth grade. You really could, depending on your student, you really could wait until fifth. One is more parent-teacher led, and that is the Shirley English, and one is more student hands-on. You just sort of introduce a concept once a week, and there's some cards that they can use, and that is Winston Grammar. So I have used both with each of my boys at least one year. Now, this school year we are doing something different and he is in sixth. We are using the IEW Fix It. And I am really glad that I have decided to use this. I think it helps that he had done those other programs before 
because we are using the second book. Now, I want to say if I started with the first book last school year, would it still be okay? And I would think so. So I want to say IEW is definitely a recommendation, but I don't think it's needed until like fifth or sixth grade to even start book one because I know like my high schooler is using one of the older books. So I know the, the progress that they'll make throughout those years. Okay, for spelling, I'm going to have to also mention IEW. Now, I want to tell you up front that I have tried several different spelling programs over the years when my boys were younger. We tried the sit down, the book ones, where you just have the long list. And IEW is similar to that, but I just really like the flow of it, and it, I like the rules that they use for it. What I like about them is they could do it independently, for one thing. They just put on the he there's headphones, there are CDs, or I think it's actually online now. But I will be honest with you, at this point, we are just, I'm just reading the spelling words to him because it really is, does not take long and that's just what he prefers. And it's because he is my last one and I have the time, but my third one, he used the headphones <laughs> most of the time. All right, for handwriting. And really, we don't go into much more handwriting after early elementary. Um, I don't usually pick a book unless I have one that's really struggling, but even then, it's more my personal narration, copy work. Um, I don't really pick a particular curriculum, but I'm gonna mention one and show you another. We did use Cheerful Cursive, and I'll link just a picture of it right here. I think all my boys have done that, like in third or fourth grade, and that was more of their introduction to cursive. Right now, my sixth grader is using his story handwriting, and this isn't even something he's real consistent with, but I want to recommend it because I really like, this is scripture writing. They have one, I think it's geography. Um, they have several different ones, and I just really liked that idea of they were copying from something, from either history or from the Bible. So I do wanna mention that for handwriting. All right. What about reading through the upper elementary years? In my early elementary video, I did mention how much we are sort of out of a box curriculum family. And really once they hit fourth grade, you really start seeing their own personal interest. So we do use just whatever books we may have on our shelf. What I okay to get at the library. Maybe they have a specific interest. I might look for a series that they might enjoy. I personally have seen that through the fourth and sixth grade is when their reading really picks up. Um, it excels. I almost <laughs> think they may read more books through fourth and sixth grade than they do from seventh to twelfth. Let me know if you have gone that far and if you have noticed that. I'm hoping, because my sixth grader really does enjoy reading, that that stays, but, but we'll see. I am going to mention one thing that I do want to say that I've opened it and tried it, and I may actually do like sort of an open book review of it. And it is from Heart of Dakota, which is a curriculum we use, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But it's called Drawn into the Heart of Reading. They use whatever books you choose. They have generic studies, pre-reading activities, literature discussions, story element lessons, thinking skills, godly character, vocabulary, and so on. So this would be like the teacher's guide and then they actually have student books that you would order for whether it be second or third, fourth or fifth. I can't remember what ages, sixth or seventh. I'm not sure what it goes up to. If you feel like you need a curriculum or a guide or want to go into a little bit more depth, this might be something to look into. Now, I do wanna mention one other thing because I think it would be fun and it is from Confessions of a Homeschooler. She has a lot of literary guides for elementary and middle school. I'm not sure. I can't. It's been a while since I've looked at it, if she goes all the way through high school. So I have not looked at the older ones, but I thought the elementary ones looked so much fun. And I had printed off, had purchased and printed off this one from Henry Ford. And she tells you what book to read. And then from there you do literary discussions um, and you actually have things that you would fill out, cut out and sort of build a lap book from the books that you read. And I printed this off with great intentions 
it but it's just time it is another thing that is time consuming but I do feel like when my boys were little if I would have known about it I think I printed this off thinking I would do it with my sixth grader now like in the last couple years but I think it is something that we definitely would have done when all three of my boys were close in age and they were younger it just looks so much fun so I do want to mention that also for reading she like I said she has several literature guides and I'll link her site below okay I'm also going to get into math history and science um, a couple boxed curriculums but I do want to mention Bible here real quick Bible is sort of been changed over the years it looks different every year some things we've repeated but not always so I'm going to mention a few things and this is for upper elementary I do want to say that I just it depends on what curriculum you're using in general for us sometimes it's just reading the Bible and having family devotions and scripture memory which I think is really important at that age. I remember personally at that age that that is where I learned a lot of scripture memory that has stuck with me to this day. So I just knew that fourth through sixth grade was a great year to have memorization of scripture. Now, I don't have a particular curriculum. I have always just made my own list of the verses that I felt like were important, but I feel like you can find if you, you know, even if you just looked up what verses they're learning for the year of fourth or fifth grade from Abeka. You can actually find lists um, of verses if you want to look up. I know there's curriculum you can purchase for that. That's just something we've never really made the effort to invest in because I know I can just write my own cards and go from there. Now, last year, for example, my would have been fifth grader. We used Heart of Dakota. They had reading through the Old Testament specific more of the stories of the Old Testament and New Testament, and then they were learning Philippians chapter two. So that is what he did last year. And I think a couple of my other boys did that too when they did Creation to Christ. Now, this school year, he did the Proverbs people and also Bob Schultz devotionals, Boyhood and Beyond. And I do recommend these. These actually went really well together. So, like I said, for Bible, I feel like I wish I could give a specific curriculum. I do have some specific ones I'm gonna mention, but they're more for middle school, so that'll be in my middle school video. All right, for math, Matthew C. This is what I recommend. It has worked for all my different learners. Now, Matthew C is a mastery type curriculum, so you are going to learn addition all the way to long, subtraction, all the way to long and then multiplication, division, you go into fractions and then decimals. It sort of builds on top of each other. But this has worked well for all of my boys. Okay, for science, I'm gonna mention a couple things. And one I recommend is because I have had some boys that have really enjoyed it and that would be Apologia. Now, when they used Apologia, they were in a co-op setting, but my last year fifth grader who was home did use the apologia land animal book and he just read through it but he was so excited because that was something that interests him he really did enjoy it we may have done a couple of the experiments but he was just more interesting in learning and collecting the information i think for elementary those books would be good they come with notebooks that you could use we did not use the notebook last year but when my boys were in co-op and used apologia they did use the notebooks and they really like i said did enjoy those years of apologia now my son this school year is using science shepherd and i really feel like i highly recommend that one it is a video based program online but the videos are only like five maybe to six minutes long he is doing earth science this school year yes they do come with a book that has questions they do have a few experiments in them i have done a video on this i will link it below but it's definitely a christian worldview program it really answers a lot of questions doesn't leave you wondering about anything um, I love the videos that they show and doing different comparisons about he's talking about volcanoes right now and the different kinds and some footage live footage of um, erupted volcanoes so of course there's all different kinds of lessons in earth science that you will learn about 
but this is something that would be great and you can combine it um, say you have a lower elementary and an upper elementary they do have book a and b um, for answering questions like you'd watch the same videos but the questions would be a little bit at a different level and they have like intro to science they have physical science they have several different ones all right let's jump into history and geography I'm going to talk a little bit about geography. I want to mention one that I have not used, but I have seen videos on it and it looks really fun and amazing. And that would be the geography from Confessions of a Homeschooler. Like I said, I have not used it, but it's definitely um, something that you could do some combining with. It looks very hands on. There is a lot of printing and material with it. I, again, I will link her site below she has a u.s one and a world geography and she does have books that she has written up now something that my boys have used is from memoria press and that is their geography they have used they have a u.s one they have a geography one and two and i do have videos on these it's pretty much you just are reading information about each country and mapping them out in another book which i don't have on hand but this is just something that They've all learned a lot and have enjoyed doing that. All right. I also want to mention an online thing that they used to practice at those ages, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, and that is Shepherd Software. I will link them below. But it's really just, um, you can do different levels of matching, whether you want to do US geography or world geography. They have some different options. Now, I usually don't let my kids sit at the computer by themselves, so it is something that um, if I'm sitting here working or we used to have the computer upstairs in the main room that they I could set that up for them and they could it's almost like a game in a way but it's just sometimes it's timed where you're trying to get matching up um, different countries continent um, i think they may go into geographical things uh, for geography so i do want to share that with you because that's just a fun thing and i really do think it actually helped all right for history itself i'm going to mention a couple different things and one is one that we have not used now i am mentioning this because i do know someone that uses it and for us for history let me tell you this real quick for us for history i like to do um, just sort of build from the beginning. I like to start from the beginning, but not everybody likes that. So I do want to recommend because some people come in and they want a U.S. history first that Not Grass has a America the Beautiful. And I know a friend who uses it probably still because she still has some younger children and she usually spread it over a couple of years. But I had looked at it and it's just sort of different. Some of the things that you're learning, um, sometimes you're learning more about a specific place and what they you could go see there in America today and maybe the history behind it. It just looked very like, what I liked about it is that you are learning different things in some of the other American history curriculum. They so I wanna mention that for elementary, you're just like, I just wanna study American history. Some people are like that. For us, I like to start from the beginning. So. What I recommend and what we have used is Heart of Dakota. It is a curriculum some people are not familiar with. It is a Christian worldview curriculum. It has a Charlotte Mason feel to it, and it is a boxed curriculum. So all of those in one. Now, I choose it for the history, but I will let you know because it does have a Charlotte Mason feel to it, and it is a box curriculum that it comes with everything math language arts science and also some things like poetry art they will have different studies spread out through the years like shakespeare music presidents state study all those things and that sort of starts in fourth grade and the ones i'm mentioning will go all the way through middle school but let me mention the ones that I've used for upper elementary. Starting in fourth grade, it is an, a world history, and it's called Preparing Hearts for His Glory. I just absolutely loved that particular year, just how it intertwined Christ into everything and the Christian worldview that it does have. I really, really did appreciate that. I loved the book selection. It does have spines, 
with living books or read alouds that you have for your kids. So, and it is a curriculum that works up to independence. So by the time they're in middle school, definitely high school, it can be done independently. Now, last year, my fifth grader used Creation of Christ, and this school year, he's using Resurrection to Reformation. So now we're in that transition year of sixth grade, where we'll be talking about what I recommend for middle school in my next video. But that is the couple things that I would recommend for history. All right, now it's your turn. I would love to hear your recommendations um, or your favorite curriculum. If you would share below, we would all love to be able to see what other people are using. I do appreciate you all watching. If you are new to this channel, I would love for you to subscribe and join us. If this video is helpful in any way, I hope that you can give it a thumbs up. All right, I hope you all have a wonderful week and we will talk to you again soon.